from London, England, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Q covering Discover 2015. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here back from the keynote. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angles. I'm my host, Dave Vellante, founder of wikibon.com research. Our next guest, Kerry Bailey, Senior Vice President Worldwide, Indirect Sales at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, HPE, and George Machado, CEO, ITEN. Welcome to the Cube. Good to see you, Kerry. Welcome to the Cube. Thank right, you. It's good to see you again. Um, so, um, obviously, indirect, indirect business is good margin, you know, yeah. cost per order dollars, and a nice way, but partners is part of the ecosystem. You got it. Big opportunity for yep. HP, great yep. legacy business, yep. great channel, going decades back. Yep. Um, cloud is an opportunity. Yeah, it is. I mean, with, and also with the big announcement around um, Synergy, yep. service providers want simple stuff to sell, right. software's key, yep. but gross profit margin. Yep. <laughs> yep. Can they sell services? Yep. Talk about the, some of the things you guys are doing in cloud. Yeah. And some of the top. Look, I think the, the, the thing that you have to look at is, you look at 90,000 resellers we have, they're, they are trying to say, where do they play? How do they go after this market that's changing so much? And yes, cloud is one of those areas, right? You know, George is a great example <laughs> of that as a partner that has said, look, I'm on the journey with HP, I'm also on the journey with where the business uh, buying patterns are, and they've, he's dramatically moved into services. Yes, on top of infrastructure, yes, on top of where software defined you know, innovations that we're bringing like Synergy, right? But you know, he's just a great example of a partner that is the next generation partner, where we continue to encourage our partners to build those competencies up around cloud and move to where the buying patterns are, and this is, this is a poster child for us. George, I got to ask you, one of the things that's key right now in this business is it's very fast, dynamic. Yes. We're hearing things like, start with a clean sheet of paper, agile, get in the front lines, drive revenue for the business, for developers, the DevOps, but yet IT still has a lot of installed opportunities. Yep. And so as, as on the front lines, you're in front of the customer. Yes. You've got to deliver the solution, make money, and have them repeat and do it again, right? <laughs> so, so how does it stack up for you? I mean, simplicity's key, training, and also making money, a lot of gross profit. You don't want to have lower margins. So talk about the, the dynamics of what you're building. So, you're right. It's a very challenging times, but a very exciting times also, and full of opportunities. Uh, we've been partnering for HP with, uh, for three years now, and uh, we've been mainly a reseller and infrastructure partner for most of our life. But since the beginning of the cloud, cloud is actually something we cannot avoid. So we've been an early an adopter in all the very aspects of, of the cloud. Uh, and even I think cloud is clearly an accelerator for this digital first practice our customers want. And as you said, clean sheets and the discussion is all around business and it's, there's a huge transformation also in our businesses to, to go through to there. Uh, clearly there's a, the, 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 the way is going through the hybrid model of IT that's retaining what the customers already have and giving this cloud-designed environment that enable them to go to these new native cloud yeah. apps and solutions they, they design. Talk about the dynamic of uh, teamwork, because in the channel business, you have to enable them That's to right. be successful, so the product's got to be good. Yeah. Got to be incented to do it, obviously, and trained up. But yeah. you're out there on the front lines, again, you need support. What does HP bring into the table for support for the cloud? Because again, it's a lot of reference architecture opportunities, but it's still kind of evolving. The hybrid cloud's an engineering opportunity, so the ball's in your court. Okay. What's so, the, what is HP giving you? What is kind of support? Again, HP is kind of our DNA, so it's seamless for us to, to give that answer. Uh, we're also a supercharged cloud partner, Helium, and a cloud builder. And it's, everything is about the cloud, but not only about the cloud. HP, I can, can uh, discuss, has a top to down, best in class offering in the enterprise uh, market. Uh, not only in services, but also in software, a full stack of stuff, software and solutions, and also in the infrastructure side. They have also the knowledge of the customers, the customer's needs, and it's all about business nowadays, the discussion is all about business. I believe they have the right partners also yeah, to right. do so. Yeah. And it's, they, it's the best way to go to this digital first journey with this hybrid IT model, and they have all these competencies and the, all these practices that enable the, the, uh, their customers to do this in a seamless and very easy way. 
And I'll tell you one other comment on it is that we've been very, very clear in our cloud strategy with partners. We're really one of the only companies right now that says we're not going to compete with his cloud business. We're going to enable his cloud business. We're, we announced recently, as you know, yeah. we are not in the public cloud space because our public cloud is I-10, right? Those are the type of partners that when they are moving and are committed to HP around the innovations that we're bringing in cloud, we're going to focus our routes to market to ITIN and, and make sure they're enabled. That's a good point. I mean, this, yep. is, this comes down to trust. Yes, it the does. trust relationship is always there because I'm almost putting myself in your shoes. Hey, I'm in the front lines. I'm taking the orders. I'm getting the POs. I'm getting the product from HP. I don't want you to backdoor the customer and take the order. That's right. I mean, that's, I mean talk about that channel yeah. conflict. Yeah, and, and I you think guys just don't have any channel conflict. You're there's, saying I've never seen channel conflict. Um, <laughs> no, but 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 I'll tell you that. But you, you you go there and say I'm not going to take orders for your business yep. with our direct sales force. That's right. So we've we've made a couple of really interesting announcements as we became HPE. One of them is you know we've said partner first. Okay, a lot of companies say that. Seventy percent of our revenue flows through partners. Period. Then you say, well, what else have we done? You go, on the cloud space, we said we're not going to be in the public cloud space because we're going to use our trusted partners to do that, right? And, and as you continue to take these steps, what it says is the partners, we're, we're in a different world of partnering right now, right? We've got to look for partners that have been on this transformational journey that are aligned to our strategy, and when they're aligned to that, it is, just as we've been in business together in our traditional resale model, we are going to evolve together as it moves more into the cloud space. So our enablement has got to be significant, not just from innovation, but how do we make sure he is successful in moving to cloud space, et cetera. What's different now? You mentioned the world's different in partnering. What's yep. different now than it was, just say a few years ago, maybe five, 10 years ago now? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing for me, and, and, I, and look, I just came into the new job replacing Sue Barsamian 30 days ago, okay? And when I looked at this whole market, I go, you know, the, the channel evolved from being a manufacturer to getting distribution and resellers out. Now flip it where the buying patterns are, it's customers out to solution, business outcomes, and how you, how you enable them, right? That's a whole different partner ecosystem that develops and a whole new partner-ready uh, enablement we have to do. Yeah. So, George. I, I, I could just emphasize more the, the, yeah. the question of inf um, confidence and, and partnership. And clearly, uh, one of the key issues uh, with HP uh, Enterprise, or HPE, sorry, is the channel model DNA it has. Uh, and it assures not only having all the best solutions that they offer, but having the competitive deals on a daily delta bay basis, having the correct and adequate marketing yeah. funds to develop our strategy, having professional services that can team, with, uh, team up with us and give the best solutions to our customers, and the engagement and the alignment in this business-wise kind of conversations we're, we're doing with our customers, and this, that's clearly a differentiator. So when Kerry says, you guys, I-10, are sort of his cl public cloud mm -hmm. provider. Now you're not providing public cloud, right? You're providing no. cloud solutions to your customers, right? Yes, that's right. So, okay, right. and then, Kerry, I have to ask you. Yep. 90,000 yep. channel partners. Yep. Not all 90,000 <laughs> have made that transition. That's right. right? So that's what, right. what makes, describe, the yep. type of channel partner that you really value as HP. So, so here's what's interesting, and again, in my, my uh, early coming into the role, the one observation, I just talked to 250 CEOs of our partners a second ago on this, is the evolution of the partners, they're taking different paths. And by the way, different paths are okay. We've got partners that say, I'm not going to move into services, I'm going to move into SMB and I'm going to focus heavy on transaction business. Well, our partner model has got to be flexible enough to service them, because that's great uh, margin pools, it's the you know, fastest growing segment, et cetera. On the other side, we have to have partners that say, look, we're moving into services, consulting, professional services, et cetera. That's great, we'll enable them around our solutions. And then finally, you've got the, cut, the partners that say, I'm going to move into consumption-based models. I-10 is an example of that, right? They will deploy private cloud, they will deploy Azure. They are working with customers for the right mix of their workload to what delivery model and cloud should work. So the reality is, we have, you know, I would say 10%, 15% of those partners have made a move into services. There'll be more, but we, it's, it's over the next, you know, two or three years, 
that they've got to decide where to play uh, and that's going to be the answer. And, and George, for your company, when did you decide to make that move, or have you always been in that space? To cloud since the beginning. Okay, so I, I cannot understand how there are. I, ca I, I can understand why some partners do not, do not sell cloud. Yeah. I cannot understand why why cloud isn't part of their IT strategy because it's, it's part part of any strategy of a business uh, case of a customer. So you have to, even though you are a seller and sell infrastructure you have to know how to implement cloud or how to deploy cloud in the same infrastructure. And your services and consulting, it's around mm -hmm. cloud, but you, you've got other services as well? Do you provide solutions specific to, say, for example, SAP or data? Yes. Or we Talk about that a little bit. We do solutions to ERP. This kind of solutions more in the cloud is the kind of solutions we do where we can change into as a service model. Uh, we do management service, uh, cloud automation, cloud services in terms of provision and deployment. We do some uh, like field services. We do a lot of solutions we combined with collaboration mobility that go through cloud platforms in order to have a global reach and a mobile reach to, to our customers. And you will resell public cloud services. Let's say, take for example, Azure, yep. which was announced yes. yesterday. You'll resell that service. Yes, I resell Azure as a, as a public cloud strategy, but also as an hybrid oh. and private cloud strategy. Yeah. I, well, I've been leveraging uh, HP uh, e, um, offerings, infrastructure services, and, and cloud offerings, such as HP Alien, together with Azure, Azure practices. And we can perfectly do this and get the best solution to the customer. Okay, and, and it doesn't will, collide in any way. And you'll differentiate by providing other services on top of that, which what? Sure. Getting people up and running on the public cloud? Yeah, provisioning uh, the services they have in cloud, managing the services they have on cloud and doing the setup and implementations they need for the hybrid environment, they, or they also have. A and, and obviously you charge for those services, but relative obviously. to, of course, but so relative to somebody who's just purely moving boxes, you can turn that knob a little bit and say, hey, not only can we sell you the infrastructure, oh, yeah. but we can also provide these other services I'll on I'll top. Answer, I, I'll answer you that's only in the reseller side then. Yeah. Selling cloud solutions, never, the cross-sell I do in infrastructure is huge. Because whenever they want to go to cloud or prepare the infrastructure to cloud, they want to modernize their infrastructure, being, being server, storage, networking, security. They have to modernize this to, in order to accept all these cloud solutions they want to implement. So it's a huge opportunity, not only on services, but on selling additional infrastructure. And I think it'll keep going for a while. That's how, the value how, of a partner right how, there. How yep. do you, how, how do you yep. guys look at the, sort of the, the DevOps crowd? Mm -hmm. Some yep kids that are in some brownstone and hoodies in London banging away on code, no infrastructure, right? Yeah. They, don't, they don't move infrastructure for you. That's right. but, but increasingly your customers are yes. doing business with those guys. Do you partner with them? Where do they fit into this yeah. whole ecosystem? So we do a little bit of ourselves, but not, that's not the issue. What, we try, what we're trying to do is kind of create ecosystems with these kind of companies, these partners, these startups, to give them the, to be the cloud partner. So they give them the cloud platforms and what they need. They don't want to manage the cloud. They want to, don't want the services relating to that. They want just to develop their applications and put it on the customer side. We're trying to give them the ecosystem. They need not only to publish what, what they do, but also we, we, we are in Europe. We have a lot of customer base. Give them access to our partners and to our customers in order so they could deploy more easily to other, to other places. So partnership, yes, for yeah. sure. Are you guys developing any software, proprietary software, or are you guys composing the solutions? Uh, yes, guys, we do. You, do yes, you, as an ISV, it's mainly mobility, collaboration, kind of portals and integration, more, more of that kind of stuff. So you're selling the implementation as well, the professional services as well, yes. to the customer? Yes. How do you guys reconcile that with HP? Because I know you said professional services. They're, they're not competing services most no. of the case all the time, is there? That's right, and, and in fact, you know, I think it was at GPC this year, we opened up our professional services teams to our partners to mostly enable them to, to begin to say, look, when you are taking a customer on a journey, say from traditional IT and you're getting their first set of workloads over to our, our cloud system, 
you, there's professional services that have got to go with that to enable that customer, right? So, you know, our partners are going to deliver the majority of our professional services to enable our joint customers. We'll use our professional services to fill gaps around our products, and, but also enable our partners. So it used to be nice buckets for partners. Oh my goodness. Resellers, ISVs, VABs, yeah. and VARs, and all this stuff. Where did this cloud fit in? Because you're an ISV, you're also a reseller, you're also a value-added business. I mean, you're everything. I mean, it's just like an integrated stack of naming. What, how does you guys, how do you, we talk yeah. about this new normal? Yeah, look, I'll give you my perspective on this because you know, when I went out, I, I talked to 57 of our, our partners when I came into the role. Some were distribution, some were resellers, some were VARs that have made the transition. And when you talk to all of them, the lines have blurred. Yeah, but yeah. frankly, the lines have blurred with the partners like they blurred with the vendors. It used to be hardware, software, services, and that's all that companies did. Those were days it was easy, right? Yeah. Now, Everybody does a combination of all, and the reality is the partner ecosystems are evolving very rapidly right now, and, and that's why we've got to make sure our partner programs are flexible enough to, to drive towards where they're going in their business. What's your vision then to supporting the partners? Because that's going to be the key. Trust on the channel conflict, check the box there. Yep. Yeah. Have good products, good. Yeah. The, the, the support, the soft dollars, the programs. Yep. Because now you have that blurry, and it's almost, <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah. you know, integrated stack in the cloud, integrated services you've got to provide to the partners. What's the, That's right. what's the vision? That's right. So I, I would tell you that if you look at, one, our whole compensation rebates, MDF, have been pretty consistent. We did make a change this year going into it that said, it's not your traditional MDF, it's not your traditional rebates of sell this much volume and, and here's the compensation that goes with it. It's much more around the joint business plan we have together and the initiatives that you have to drive towards the higher value services Here's where we're going to incent and compensate. And look, I think we got the best compensation program out on the market. But it has to continue to evolve with partners, especially as they go into more cloud and consume in, in those areas, right? So, you know, it, it's evolving and, and it's, it's an uh, opportunity. It's, it's a great yeah, opportunity. Yeah, it's an opportunity, but George, we, we've got to evolve fast. Yeah. George, what's your take on what you need going forward? What's some of the things that you want looking for as you? climb that mountain and look down the valley of opportunity. <laughs> You're going to need, uh, what's your vision and what, what are you looking for? Uh, in terms of cloud or Support, or compensation, because again, there's some funding's yeah. going to come I, I, in. You I, might I, have to I, hire the hoodie I developers. Give you the, right. the, the quick answer is more, more, and more. <laughs> but, but no, actually I, I'm very comfortable with the, the compensation models and the, the, the partner practice that's, yeah. that we're having with Haley Parker right, right now, Enterprise. Um, and, and just going to back to your case, we have it all, but we don't need to have it all. We have it all because we think, we, first, we do have competencies in all of those areas, and having this all give us more profitable because we can get more grasp of PFRs and market development funds. Yep. But any partner can choose their pick or where they want to be, and they can partner with everyone else to, to do that. What I would expect, I would expect <laughs> some more, a less complex European market, yeah. less yeah. complex. Yeah. Uh, we're going international, every board is going international, and the, the global reach is, is there, but still there's, it's a very com complex mar marketplace in Europe. Kerry Bailey, Worldwide Indirect Sales at HP, thanks for coming on theCUBE. George, CEO of Partner, profit margins are very key, <laughs> and having the trust, no channel conflict, good products, good luck, congratulations, thanks for joining us and sharing your insight on theCUBE. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show. This is theCUBE here, live in London for HPE Discover. We'll be right back with more after this short break. Thank you.